So you're probably wondering why I'm not covering the last season of Attack on Titan like I said I would and for those of you who are up to date you already know why. You see as I was getting ready to watch the final three episodes of season 4 in a row last week I was excited beyond belief. I put my phone on airplane mode, poured myself a drink, got comfortable and started watching until well until I slowly realized it was going to be impossible for them to finish the whole series in only three episodes and by the end of the final scene yeah. Now I did notice this, I did think that the pacing of the second half of this season was a little slow if they wanted to end the entire story, but to end on a cliffhanger like this one and to announce a second part of season 4 got me both disappointed and extremely excited. This meant I wasn't going to be able to release my analysis video since I really wanted to analyze the story as a whole and for this I need the show to actually conclude. But this also meant Attack on Titan was going to continue and that there would be more amazing action scenes and plot twists to come and I was going to enjoy every second of it when it came out. Oh, by the way, when does it come out? Oh, winter 2022. Wow, that's a long time. In any case, the show must go on and instead of that today I decided to take a quick look at a series that you probably haven't seen but maybe you've heard of it and that is Dennis Kelly's 2014 dark comedy conspiracy thriller Utopia. So. Utopia follows a group of strangers that meet over the internet to discuss a mysterious graphic novel that seems to predict and explain many real world catastrophes within its pages. They learn the comic has a second part that was never released, and as they try to put their hands on it, they soon realize that a shady organization known as The Network are also after it, and they don't want anyone else knowing about it. Things escalate quickly and our protagonists soon find themselves on the run, fighting for their lives while uncovering more and more about this giant conspiracy. Over the years, this series has slowly and surely gained a cult following and has been praised by many for its clever storyline, true life characters, unique directing style, weirdly fascinating soundtrack and vibrant cinematography. And since I'm really into conspiracy theories, not like conspiracy theories themselves, just stories about conspiracies, I thought this would make for an interesting watch and uh, well, I was not disappointed. There's a lot to say about Utopia and pretty much all the praise that it gets I think it's pretty deserved. It's not often that you see a British public network channel produce something this dark and offbeat. The last time I saw something like this was in the first two seasons of Black Mirror, which are the best seasons just because of the fact that they're 100% British by the way. Unfortunately, due to insufficient ratings, the show was cancelled in late 2014 and fans never got to see a third series happen. Now this was one of the things that kind of made me sleep on the show for years because I really hate being into something only to have it stop abruptly and never giving me a conclusion. But even with this cancellation, I still think Utopia delivers very well and the end of the second series can serve as something that's close to an ending. But what I'd like to talk about today is some of the controversies of the show had while it was being broadcast. Most of them were about the on-screen violence. And I'd also like to discuss the way that the show handles pacing and intensity over the course of a relatively short time span. The violence in Utopia follows what I would call a trend that has appeared during the 2010s which focuses on making the scenes of physical conflict, fighting, assassination, torture and everything else appear from nowhere. In most other films, moments of violence have a little bit of build-up preceding them so as to prepare the audience for what's about to come. Moreover, if the violence means the death of a character, then building up the tension could seem essential at times since the writer might want to avoid too much shock on the spectator. However, there have been more and more films and series relying on the surprise factor of random violence not only to make the story more realistic since it's true that violence can appear out of nowhere in real life, but also to make everything seem uncompromising. We can observe this trend in films like Drive or Green Room, which used violence as a way to break off moments of little to no tension. This added layer of unpredictability saw a particular rise in popularity during, of course, the 2010's biggest show, Game of Thrones. Many fans were praising the ruthless randomness of deaths happening on screen since it made it all the more difficult to clearly identify one or several main protagonists. And the violence in Utopia feels like the same kind and you can tell that the writers wanted it to be a tool that would help carry on the feeling of paranoia that the main characters are constantly struggling with. Since at any moment you could get compromised and killed out of nowhere, 
you always need to be careful no matter what. Another way that the show uses violence is also for hooking the audience from the very first scene. Indeed, almost every episode of Utopia starts off with one or several gruesome deaths that are sometimes given without any context. The shock factor combined with the mystery behind those scenes serves as a great starting point to follow the episodes. And well, I have to admit it's a simple but effective way to hook your audience who might just be watching whatever happens to be on TV. At first, this really worked on me and I really do believe that the show has one of the best pilot episodes I've seen in the last couple of years. It doesn't wait around a few episodes or a few seasons for the action to start. The characters are both introduced and revealed while actively participating in the story, which is already in motion from episode 1. But as I kept watching, I did seem to notice that the show's fast pacing and use of relentless violence in almost every episode started losing a little bit of its edge. So now let me talk a little bit about the pacing. It seemed like a problem that the show was going to face eventually. When the very first episode starts off with several deaths, a small chase scene and a torture session, you know the show is making its intentions very clear. This is going to be an intense, violent, adult ride where nobody is safe. And the question becomes, how do you keep that kind of intensity going without resorting to cheap story tricks or unnecessary shocking scenes? In the world of Utopia, where almost everyone could be working against you, there are no real alternatives apart from breaking into places, torturing people to get information, or holding your enemies at gunpoint. After several episodes of this, it all becomes routine, like it's an essential part of its story. There are other series that can suffer from this intensity syndrome where you absolutely need a gun involved in every scene to make it feel intense, but after a while all the guns and violence just make less of an impression on you. Now don't get me wrong, I'm not trying to be the annoying guy complaining about the banality of violence on screen these days. Violence is a part of life, so it should therefore be a part of our stories. It's fine for it to sometimes be exacerbated, either for style or intensity, but just like with everything else, it's mostly a question of balance. The only exception I could think of would be certain action films or exploitation horror film, whose entire point is to shock you beyond belief, but for most other stories, violence is a tool and you have to use it properly for it to have the effect that it's supposed to have. And this is something I might hold a against Utopia and a few other series out there. They don't seem to balance the violence properly. They use it as a way to keep the pacing of the story fast and intense, when sometimes slowing things down doesn't necessarily mean losing the edge. A good example I can think of would be the third episode of Black Mirror, entitled The Entire History of You, where there is a slow but palpable tension between a husband and his wife that escalates for about 40 minutes, before having one scene of relatively soft balance that brings our character to an argument where questions are answered and attention comes to a peak. It didn't need the main character to use a gun or for anybody to die, and yet the ending of that episode stays in my memory like one of the most intense and heartbreaking ones in Black Mirror. And that's because it feels real. The characters feel like real people having a real conversation about something that might just happen to you if this kind of technology were to exist. But now, going back to Utopia, does the show's use of violence as a way to keep things exciting take away from its quality? Not so much. I still think it's a really, really good show, and if you like dark comedies and conspiracies, you're bound to love it. I just thought it could have benefited from having its moments of intensity either more spread out or to offer some variety instead of relying on gunshots for most of the time. Oh god, I can't believe I'm making a criticism of a show's violence because, like, let me tell you, I'm the first one to watch all kinds of violent, mature content. But even when it comes to that, I still think quality is most of the time better in quantity. Thank you again for watching this episode, I hope you liked it. Are there any series or films that you thought didn't manage their violence very well? Let me know about your examples in the comments. By the way, I release a new video on this channel every two weeks, so don't forget to subscribe, like the video and hit the bell icon to get notifications in the future. In the meantime, I'll see you next time. Goodbye guys.